Recently, there have been a lot of stories in the news about breach of cardholder data in retail environments. What's very clear is that had many of those retailers implemented a form of encryption, that that would have certainly safeguarded them against those breaches. P2PE is designed as an industry standard for encryption and gives both retailers and solution providers a clear set of requirement in terms of what's needed in terms of data security and encryption. It's a responsibility of all merchants and retailers to comply with PCI DSS. P2PE will make that compliance easier by reducing complexity and reducing the cost of compliancy. And that's the real benefit of P2PE. As part of uh, P2P implementation, there are certain um, activities and responsibilities that a merchant has. To help them, merchants will be given a P2P instruction manual. This is often referred to as a PIM. So for example, in our case, we will supply the merchant with a PIM. It will clearly define what they have to do and indeed what we do as well. And that can be uh, supplied to their QSA and that will help them achieve overall PCI DSS compliance. Currently, the P2P standard is applicable to payment service providers, such as Verifone's Payware-Osius gateway, for example. For larger merchants who host their own payment gateways, they are actually interested in the P2P standard because it's a good place to start for encrypting cardholder data. And eventually, when the uh, domain four of the PCI P2P standard is defined, it puts them in a good place to adopt that and thus uh, reduce their cost of PCI DSS compliance. P2P encryption will definitely reduce fraud. Clearly, if you encrypt cardholder data at the point of capture and maintain that encryption through to a PCI compliant data center, the risk of compromise in that chain is much reduced. Fraudsters will always look for the weakest link in the security chain, so it's really important that merchants maintain their PCI compliance to avoid such a risk. Any payment device that is used in the environment has to follow the P2P instruction manual guide or the PIM as it's known. And that documents everything from the birth of the terminal all the way through to the end of its use in the environment. How we provide the terminal to the merchant, how it gets all the encryption keys loaded onto the device, through to the delivery of the device in tamper event packaging. And then that goes, extends into how the merchant then receives the device, checks it for its security to ensure it hasn't been tampered with. From there, the merchant has responsibility to follow the PIM document to then decide how to place it into the production environment, install it, configure it, and then do regular checks on the device. Therefore, provided all of that is covered based on the security compliance of PCI PTS and the PIM is followed, all devices then can be used in the P2P environment. Once a P2P solution has been deployed, which can include smart and mobile devices, the merchant still has an obligation to follow the PIM document. The PIM contains information such as when solutions need to be audited and inspected for evidence of tampering, and that can also include and extend to repaired devices and replacement devices. The way the original devices were received by the merchant, should they be replaced, they will need to go through the same PIM process to receive the device, check it, and so on. There's a recommendation of an annual review, however there's always scope for the merchant to complete that on a regular basis to ensure that the environment is completely secure.